hello students okay so let us uh, today discuss about the role of physiotherapy in burn injuries so physiotherapy plays a very vital role in the management of uh, burn injuries so let us briefly see what are the uh, types and uh, of physiotherapy or how physiotherapy can help in uh, recovering of a burn injury patient so burn rehab incorporates the physical psychological and the social aspects of care and it is common for burn patients to experience difficulties in one or all of these areas following a burn injury burns can leave a patient with severely debil debilitating and deformating contractures which can lead to significant disability when left untreated the aims of burn rehabilitation are to minimize the adverse effects caused by the injury in terms of uh, that is maintaining the range of movement minimizing contracture development and the impact of scarring maximizing functional ability maximizing psychological well-being and maximizing social integration now the critical care it is essential that the physical rehabilitation is commenced at the day one of admission whether the patient is ambulant and well or on bed rest and immobile immobile sorry immobile so when a patient is admitted with severe burns it is essential to reduce the risks as far as possible of further complications arising postural management of the patient by elevating the head and the chest helps with the chest clearance and reduces swelling of the head neck and the upper airway so here are here is a picture showing different positions of the burn we have of dealing a burn patient in what position can the uh, contracture or we can we can improve the patient and we can uh, prevent from other complications like the functional position of the hand this is for to prevent the neck contracture this is the the to prevent the ankle uh, contracture for the hand and the web space and the fingers how to maintain the position so the benefits of positioning in a burn rehab is actually it prevents the contracture it controls the edema it prevents localized neuropathies and it maintains elongated position of the soft tissue now the anti contracture positioning and splinting plays a very very important role in the burn rehabilitation and it must start from day 1 and may continue for many months post injury it applies to all patients whether they have skin grafted or not positioning is important to influence tissue length by limiting or inhibiting loss of range of motion secondary to the development of scar tissue so here you can see a picture of a burn patient who had who is not being nursed in anti contracture position with impending neck and axillary contracture already developed <coughs> in the this picture you can see the flexion contracture of the neck has already been developed because of not adequate uh, physiotherapy or burn rehabilitation it can be avoided by having a pillow under the shoulder and nursing with the neck in extension there should not be no pillow under the head if there is a pillow under the head it will turn the neck into a flexion and ultimately it will enhance the flexion contraction so 
there should not be pillow under the head pillow under the shoulder and nursing with the neck in extension this picture you can see extension contracts of the neck it can be avoided by sitting with head in flexion and lying with pillows behind the head this is for the extension contracture to avoid the extension contracture here this patient you can see the axillary contracture and it can be prevented by lying and sitting with arms abducted at 90 degrees supported by pillows or foam blocks between the chest and the arms and the figure of eight bandaging or strapping to provide stretch across the chest this is another picture of a flexion contracts at the elbow which can be avoided by keeping the elbow in extension by extension splint clawing of the fingers can be avoided by keeping the metacarpophalangeal joints in flexion intrapharyngeal joints in extension thumb and mid palmar radial abduction the thumb here in this picture in the palm deformity can be avoided by keeping the wrist extended with the minimal metacarpophalangeal flexion and keeping the fingers extended and thumb abducted here you can see the flexion contracts of the hips which can be prevented by lying prone with legs extended limited sitting and side lying supine lying with legs extended no pillows under the knees and nursing in this position will cause flexion contractures in the hips and the knees so in this position is not advisable which will easily cause the flexion contractures in the hip and the knee so prone lying with legs extended or supine lying with legs extended no pillow under the knee should be kept this is a flexion contracts of the knee which can be avoided by keeping the legs extended in lying and sitting and by using knee extension splints this is again a picture of dorsal contracture at the ankle and can be prevented by keeping the ankles at 90 degrees using pillows to maintain position and encourage sitting with feet flat on floor as long as no edema is present this is a cross mandibular deformity mal occlusion and neck contraction can be prevented by proper nursing and splintage a well padded tube can be inserted into the mouth to combat the mouth contracture this is a complex picture of a complex bilateral lower limb contracture which can be avoided by proper anti deformity splintage so we have seen that positioning and splinting plays a very very effective role in preventing and avoiding development of contractures so splinting splints are a highly effective method of helping prevent and manage burn contractures and are an integral part of a comprehensive rehabilitation program splinting helps maintain entry contracture positioning particularly for those patients experiencing a great deal of pain difficulty with compliance or with burns in an area where positioning alone is insufficient splinting can also provide a stretched position which allows or which also provides an easier starting point for exercise and stretching regimes splinting is the only available therapeutic modality that applies control gentle forces to soft tissues for sufficient lengths of time to induce tissue remodeling so here you can see the pictures of different splints we can make by easily available resources materials used for making splints the cardboard splints made of discarded dressing foam and blown polystyrene along with pvc pipes used to make hand splints this is uh, pvc pipes and elbow cut padded and fabricated into axillary splints here also you can see the fabrication of elbow extension splint fabrication of hand splints from pvc sheets in the functional position then the fabrication of neck splints from garden pipes a scarf used for postural support and to stretch pectoral scar all these existing resources we can make use of 
making good splints and supporting devices to maintain the proper positioning and very much useful in the burn rehabilitation so the examples of splints in use in cervical soft uh, neck collar philadelphia collar model neck splint watsui collar made of plastic tubes hello neck collar the ear semi rigid oxygen mask mouth mouth spreader external traction hook and axilla and anterior chest we use axilla airplane splint clavicle figure of eight splint in the elbow and knee gutter or trough splint air splint in the hip hip spica abduction splint spreader bar in the ankle posterior foot drop high top gym shoe shoe and anterior and posterior ankle conformer in the wrist and hand wrist splint thumb spica thumb web spacer spacer so this is the another method that is the high voltage pulsed galvanic stimulation where we have found that it is uh, uh, useful and it has several possible explanations of its effect on the wound healing it is positive electrical stimulation stimulates repair process the negative pole stimulation will destroy any bacteria and it increases superficial circulation and it and enhances or hastens healing the application parameters is that the, the intensity should be adjusted according to the patient tolerance the rate setting should be continuous or surged pulse rate 80 pulse per second the electrodes are active usually anode cover treatment area covering the treatment area dispersive cathode on the back treatment time should be of 20 to 30 minutes next uh, modality useful in the burn manage, management uh, or the burn rehab is the ultrasonic therapy ultrasound therapy the effects of ultrasound on wound healing includes promotion of uh, formation of granulation tissue accelerated re it reduces wound infection through improving circulation though it is a controversial but uh, researchers and studies are going on it improves scar pliability thus used in hypertrophic uh, scars for the scar mobility phonophoresis also can be used and to introduce wound healing medications Applications should be in contact using coupling media as paraffin oil or aquasonic gel. Aquasonic gel pad usually applied at the wound edges. Subaquatic using suitably sized water container, previously boiled water, usually applied to the wound bed, distance of 1 to 5 cm from the skin. Then you have the next modality ultraviolet radiations EVR. It accelerates the healing through facilitating mitosis in the germinal layers of the skin it helps in maintaining sterility through destroying surface bacteria but high doses should be avoided at the growing wound edges as it may induce more skin damage now the next is the laser the laser is used it has functions of increasing prostaglandins quickens collagen synthesis increase atp synthesis enhance immune cells to attack pathogens enhance fibroplasia it overall affects the biostimulation the types of laser used in for wound healing are the helium neon laser the gallium arsenide argon laser and the carbon dioxide laser stretching and early mobilization plays a very important role the joints affected by burns should be moved and stretched several times a day and the patient is likely to require assistance of the members of the burn team and also the family members to reach full range of movement therapists use clinical judgment based on the appearance of the tissue whether uh, as to whether passive range of motion or active range of motion is performed and also to determine when the range of motion is resumed after immobilization Next is to encourage activities of daily living. The burn patients often feel a sense of loss of role and ability to participate in normal activities of life. So the activities of daily living play an extremely important role in a burn patient's successful outcome. If a patient can accept the responsibility of self-exercise and activities of daily living, then the most difficult aspects of the rehabilitation are easily achieved. 
in the later stages of rehabilitation the psychological impact the psychological counseling the scar management the hypertrophic scarring scarring is common following a burn injury and it may cause significant functional and cosmetic impairment so for that positioning anti contractual positioning as we have discussed should be encouraged for many months post injury whenever individual is at rest second is splinting already we have discussed not only essential for positioning but also for stretching and lengthening the contracted scar tissue continued early splintage is removed only for exercise and it should be removed only for exercise and specific functional activities it can which maximize long term outcome and can be continued for 6 months post healing up to 2 years or sometimes longer than that in children the stretching and exercise in the early stages post wound healing scars and extremely active and dynamic and the contractile force is at its highest if the burn is close to over a joint it must be stressed to avoid loss of uh, range of motion and to prevent the post burn contracture developing stretching of affected joints several times a day to their maximum functional range in conjunction with the splinting regime appears to help elongate the scar tissue maintaining range of motion massage and moisturizing friction massage deep friction massage and the, the scar tissue massage is widely advocated as an integral part of burn scar management while the exam mechanism of its effects are not fully known but it appears to help in several ways application of a moisturizer burn scars are often lacking in moisture depending on the depth of the injury and the extent of the damage to the skin structures pressure therapy is a primarily primary modality in burn scar management although the clinical effectiveness has never been scientifically proven studies are still going on the pressure garments appear to help reduce scar tissues lumpiness reduce scar redness swelling relieve itching protect newly healed skin graft prevent contractures maintain contours and there is the silicon is another modality used to treat hypertrophic scarring exact mechanism of the action of silicon is the prevention and management of hypertrophic scars is still unclear uh, so thank you students for watching this video i hope you have uh, got some idea and uh, understood the role of physiotherapy in the burn rehabilitation and the different modalities and different uh, techniques of splinting and different techniques of positioning how much vital and is important for dealing with the burn patient to prevent contractures and deformities so any doubts or any suggestions we can discuss uh, thank you for watching